Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. The other day I was working on the uh, FT817 and I nonchalantly did something that I usually do to avoid some interference from a nearby station and I thought, you know, I've never really talked about IF shift on a lot of these older radios, what it's for and how it's useful. So I thought I'd do a video explaining IF shift and specifically showing you a demo on the FT817 of how you can use it to reduce perhaps eliminate interference from a nearby station that's close to this frequency that you're operating on. So uh, for those of you that are just interested in the demo, let's go ahead and go over to the FT817 and I'll show you uh, the IF shift control and how it works. Uh, to get to it, by the way, if you look at the front panel of the FT817, down in the lower left corner, there's a button and that button's labeled Clarifier. Now if you tap that button once, it is basically receiver incremental tuning. It allows you to tune the receiver independent of your transmitting frequency or your VFO frequency uh, and shift it up and down a little bit. Um, that can be useful for other reasons. However, if you hold that button in for uh, one second, the radio will beep and it will go into IF shift mode. And then the uh, encoder, the little rotating knob next to it, allows you to shift the IF frequency up and down to eliminate interference, bring it outside of your filter. Let's go take a look at how that works. So here is my FT817, currently sitting on 20 meters. And I'm listening to a QSO. No. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe there's something, but... Uh, that, that... Now, if you listen close, you'll hear a real high-pitched ee 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 from a nearby station. That comes out. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a long time for sure. So. Now, that's the interference that I want to tune out, and I'm going to activate IF shift. Now, the clarifier button right down here in the corner, if I hold that in for a second, you'll hear the radio beep. Let us know how you like that when you... Uh... I don't know if you heard that beep, but you see this dot that appeared here? That tells us that the IF shift is now activated. Now I'm going to wait until I really hear that noise, that interference, and then I'm going to use this knob to shift the IF frequency and the filter. This has a mechanical filter in it. Um, modern radios will have a digital signal processor and the filter is done through software so the filters are very flexible you can change their their width you can shift them around on the dual uh, passband tuning with the 7300 you can change just um if if our filter was this wide you could change just one side of it without changing the other side you know dsp filters are very powerful but a lot of older radios have mechanical filters where the filter is fixed. It's done in hardware. It's either crystals or some other technique to uh, create your passband filter in the IF. Uh, and those filters are not adjustable. I cannot change the width of the filter and I can't move the filter up and down. But I can shift the entire IF chain with IF shift, basically moving the frequency spectrum under the filter instead of moving the filter itself. So let's listen for that real high-pitched interference and then I will shift my IF with this knob, and you'll hear me dial that interference right out. Probably not aware of that, but we've been a type 2, type two diabetic for many, many years, 10, 15 years, something like that. And we had taken medication for it. Uh, uh, you, know, you prick yourself with the, uh, the little indicator there, and the glucose measure, glucose levels uh, once or twice a day, or once a week, or whatever, whatever period you like. And, been doing that for a long time. The medication we've been taking has been coming less and less effective. The, the numbers are uh, climbing on that, uh, on that scale. So with the doctor and said, uh, you, you think we need insulin or something? Uh, you know, this, again, the medication seems to be uh, uh, less, less effective. So. So you can hear that that noise is still there, but it's greatly reduced. It's right down at the background level now. I've shifted the IF and shifted the signals over 
um, to the edge of that filter skirt. Now you could also hear that the QSO's audio got bassy. And this lady was the surface attack. Everything I was doing is wrong. You, what, are you, what are you eating? Uh, what, what's your breakfast? Well, maybe some cornflakes or... We'll just turn the fil we'll just turn the uh, IF shift on and off a couple of times so you can hear the difference. So we can illustrate that he's got this big you know, simplified pack control. But the interesting thing, then this background is a uh, instead of pricking yourself with the needle, I think you're measuring milligrams per deciliter is a number of uh, 100, 125, and that's pretty normal for uh, for people that aren't diabetic and. Uh, Go up in the two and three hundred range for if you're type one diabetic, it's up off the scale, and you need uh, insulin and all kind of special stuff. So anyway, they they got this little monitor. They stick that on your. So there you go. You can see how. Uh... The IF shift allowed me to get that me 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 interference down to where it's not so annoying, and I could concentrate on the QSO that I wanted to hear. So that's the uh, that's the trick. IF shift on the FT817. Just hold that clarifier button in for a second to enable it, and then rotate this knob to shift it up or down to eliminate that interference. Um, next to the display here, you can see these little down arrows. That's telling me that I shifted it down. If I want to get it back to where it uh, is centered. I just rotate back until I hit see the dot appear. Now I'm up. There it is. Now I'm back in uh, central again. The, the shift is back to where it should be. So that's what that indicator shows you there when you've got IF shift on. Uh, which way you've shifted and uh, um, if you're shifted or not. So I'll go ahead and turn it off and you'll see the dot disappear. Boom. Alright, now we're back to normal again. Right now. So there you go. That's how you can use IF shift on the FT817 to help reduce adjacent interference. So now that you've seen how IF shift can help you uh, reduce interference from a nearby station, uh, let's go over to an um, let's go to an SDR. I'm going to pull up GQRX in my Air Spy, so I can use the waterfall to visually show you exactly what's happening when we do that IF shift. All right, here we are in uh, GQRX using my AirSpy HF, and we are looking at signals on the 20 meter band. Let's listen for a moment. Oh, but I said so far I'm doing, but doing okay here, so I guess I'll we'll stick to that. Now, as you can hear, um, we have that interference going on. Let's uh, let's take a close look here. At what we're seeing so this band right here is the signal that we're interested in but right beside it and you can just kind of see it is another signal there's the the edge of it right there that's making that noise that we're hearing there you can see it right there see that let me just pause that for a second okay <coughs> This here is where our interested signal, the one that we're listening to, stopped talking. And right there you can see a little bit of that interference from this signal. You can kind of see this dark area, darker line here. See how there's like a, a bit of a concentrated energy? On a sideband signal close to the carrier, you'll see a concentration of energy. And that's because there's a lot of low frequencies in the human voice. So there's more energy there. Um, Going from the carrier point, or the, uh, the frequency that we're tuned to, uh, outwards into the sideband, there's a direct relationship between the frequency of the modulated signal and how far out it deviates. So a higher pitch audio will deviate out further. And there's a lot of bass in the human voice, a lot of low frequencies, especially in the male voice, so you see a concentration here closer to the carrier point of frequencies. And this gray represents my current filter, which is uh, 2800 hertz or 2.8 kilohertz wide. Normally with your single sideband radio, that's going to be 2.3. Let's uh, pull that down to 2.3. There we go. 2.3 kilohertz. But you can see that on the edge of our filter right here, that other station is just encroaching on our filter. 
With modern radios and DSP filters, we can simply adjust the width of our filter. We could narrow it down until they're not in there. Um, or we could move the entire filter. But with uh, the older radios, this filter is fixed, uh, usually at 23 or 2.3 kilohertz, and you can't shift that filter or you can't um, change its width. So IF shift is actually moving the, the IF frequency shift. So it's kind of shifting the entire spectrum under the filter. Um, I, I don't know how I can illustrate that. Yeah, I do. I'll just take a picture of this and I'll show you in the paint program. So here we're taking a closer look at what's going on with IF shift. Since our filter, which is this represented by this gray band here, is mechanical or physical and not adjustable, IF shift will move the reference center, the center frequency of the IF chain. Uh, essentially what it's doing is, is we're shifting the RF under the filter, like so, you see. So what we would be doing in that case where we eliminated the interference is we were shifting the IF, shifting the, R, the RF energy up like so, until this band of energy from that adjacent station is outside of our filter's skirt and therefore we're hardly hearing it, it's reduced. Now you'll notice, or you might, might have noticed that the station that we're listening to, this station, when we did that on the uh, Yezu, it got deeper and bassier sounding. And that's because what we were doing by shifting this um, over, we're taking those lower frequencies of their voice and moving them up into sort of the more of the central area of our filter, more of the mid-range. So we're taking the lower frequencies and, and putting them into the... This filter is sort of a bell shape. We're putting it more into that sensitive area. So that's why the, uh, the sound of the uh, station that we were listening to got a little more compressed and a little lower sounding and, and, and a bit mushier. We're actually reducing the amount of his signal that we're, that we're seeing through our filter and bringing the lower, basier parts of that signal more up into the middle of the filter. So that's why their, their signal sounded a little deeper, a little um, limited and mushier. But we were able to move this interfering energy here, and you can just see that darker band there um, from that adjacent station. We've, we've shifted it by shifting the IF outside of our filter. So that's how IF shift can be used to eliminate that adjacent station's interference um, from your filter and out of your audio by just shifting the IF frequency up or down if you're in lower sideband mode. So there you go. I hope that explained and made clear for you exactly what IF shift is doing. And you'll find this on most of your older radios, uh, radios that don't have the modern digital signal processing DSP um, chips and advanced fancy software derived uh, filters. For the old radios with the mechanical or crystal filters, IF shift is one way that you can effectively shift your filter and reduce adjacent interference. So I hope you found that informative and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.